morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to another fun-filled video. This is going to be the start of Module 3. This is, this is going to deal with a first chapter in Module 3, which is Chapter 9, which really embeds a few concepts. The first part of Chapter 9, uh, I'm going to do one short video on the time value of money, um, so you understand basically the time value of money. And then I'm going to give a short video just on how we price bonds. This seems to be one of the most difficult concepts for students to grasp as to how bonds are priced. Um, so let's just stick with the time value of money now as we go through everything. So basically this is chapter 9, learning objectives 1 and 3, and then also appendix C at the back of the book, uh, learning objectives 1, 2, and 3 on the time value of money. So what is the time value of money? So before understanding how to account for the issuance of bonds, it's important to understand the time value of money. If you could earn 10% per year on your investment, which option is best monetarily? $100 today or $105, $105 one year from now? 10% interest on $100 would give you $10 one year from now. So therefore $100 today will grow to be $110 one year from now. So it appears that option two, one is best monetarily. You would rather have a dollar today than a dollar tomorrow because you could invest a dollar today, earn interest, and be ahead of the game. So that's the basic concept of time value of money is that you always would have rather have a dollar today than a dollar tomorrow. $105 one year from now is less than $100 today because money loses value over time. So let's talk about the different types of time value of money uh, um, calculation. So I kind of break this down into types. There are basically only two types, future value and present value. And under each type, there's a subtype. The subtype can either be the present value of a dollar or single amount, or the present value of an annuity, an ordinary annuity. So you have type and subtype for each category. So the future value of a single amount the type would be future value, and the subtype would be a single amount, which, by the way, would come from the tables uh, found um, in the back of the book for future value of a single amount. So first we have to understand compound interest. So compound interest is where earning, you're earning interest on interest. So if you put $1,000 into a savings account that pays 10% interest, how much will you have at the end of year one? Well, the answer is you'd owe $1,000 plus 10% interest on $1,000 is $100, so you'd have $1,100. At the end of year two, you would earn 10% on the $1,100, um, so you'd have $210 interest at the end, so you'd have $1,210. You'd have $1,000 plus $100 from year one times 10%, you'd have an additional $110 in year two. How much you have at the end of year three? Well, you'd have 1331. You'd have 10% on the 1000, then the 1100 from year 1's $100 uh, that you've earned, and then the additional 110 in year 2 would compound to be worth 1331 at the end of year 3. However, if, say if we had a 30-year problem, that would be kind of compre complex to calculate. So we have this shortcut formula where we take the principal amount times 1 plus the interest rate i raised to the nth power. Then we could solve for any um, calculation with as many years um, or periods and for any interest rate and for any principal amount. Now the other subtype that we deal with is that it could be an annuity. An annuity just means you have a series of payments. You receive a payment each year. You deposited an amount each year in a savings account. Um, so you're having more than one deposit amount. So it's a recurring payment stream. When you see that type of pattern in a problem, you know you're dealing with an annuity as opposed to only having one cash flow stream. You receive it once, you pay it once. Then that usually means you're dealing with a single amount problem. So how much will you have for retirement? You are about 20 years old and you might want to retire at 65. If you put $1,000 today into stocks, how much do you think you will have when you turn 65, which is 45 years from now? And we'll assume a historical stock average of 11%. The answer would be 109530 Not too bad for just a $1,000 investment. And what if you put $1,000 in the bank each year? So this would now be, so you see the site word each year, that would be an annuity payment. How much would we have at 65? 
the answer would be look at the difference we'd have almost a million dollars so that's a really really cool thing uh, compound interest so not bad for the 45,000 that you put in and again it's the effect of compound interest now present value that's the other type so there's future value type and present value type and present value is just the opposite of future value where future value says what will be the future value of today's amount present value says what is the value today presently of some future amount so let's look at this little timeline will future value forward follow the blue line a thousand dollars compounded annually at ten percent would leave us with one thousand three hundred thirty one dollars three years later if we wanted to know what a thousand dollar payment would be worth in today's money if we were to get 10% compounded annually for three years the present value of that future amount if we present value back would be a thousand dollars which we would solve by using table 2 for the present value of a single amount table we would take the 1331 look up the factor right for 10% right three years we'd get the factor from table 2 of 0.75 multiply it together and you should get $1,000 how about the present value for the other subtype for an annuity stream instead of determining the present value of a single future amount we can determine the present value of several future amounts or what we call an annuity for an example what would it be worth to you today to receive a thousand each year notice the word each year is a sight word which tells you it will be a subtype of an annuity for the next three years let's assume the value to you um, for this money of your cost of capital is 10 percent this is known as also your discount rate the present value of three one thousand annual payments from table four looking up three and 10% would give you a factor of 2.4865 times the thousand dollars that you'll put in each year would give you a future value present value of this annuity stream of twenty thousand two thousand four hundred and eighty seven dollars so the concept of present value has many important applications in business decisions such as investing budgeting capital expenditures compensation arrangements etc so examples let's look at four discrete examples in time value of money so depositing six thousand in a savings account that earns ten percent interest how much will be in the account ten years from now first analyze this what's the type site word deposited generally will generally mean are you future valuing forward or presenting valuing back well we want to know what this is going to be worth in the future so probably this is future value how many times are we making this deposit which will tell us the subtype only once so it's a single amount so we would use the future value of a single amount table one look up for 10 percent 10 years we would see this factor and multiply it together and that would give us the answer in the second example let's say we purchase a delivery truck and agree to pay 50,000 three years from now what is the cost of the truck today site word today means what's the value of something in today's money which means its present value type how much are you paying fifty thousand how many times are you making that fifty thousand dollar payment only once so the subtype again is single amount except now it's present value type so present value type subtype is single amount ten percent three years look up get the point seven five one three one from table two present value single amount table multiply it together so the pro value of that truck in today's money is thirty seven thousand five sixty five which is less than the fifty thousand we're gonna pay um, three years from now which makes sense and number three let's establish a fund to retire thirty thousand of debt in ten years by depositing two thousand per year gives you an indication of what subtype in an account that earns nine percent is it enough to pay the debt okay you're going to establish a fund and you're going to deposit 30,000 um, you know you want to have 30,000 in the account in the future so that's future value you want to deposit 2,000 per year so it is a an annuity so we need 10 9 percent as the interest rate and it's 10 years so we'll use the future value of an annuity table table 3 for 9 percent and 10 years 
get this factor, 15.1929, multiply it by the 2000 annual payment, and that gives you 30385.80. Now, is that enough to retire the debt of 30000 up here? Correct, it is. And the last option would be you want to you rented an office. Okay, this is a typical business op platform. You rent an office in option one, you could pay twenty-five thousand today, or option two, you could pay ten thousand at the end of each year for three years at ten percent. What option is better? So number one, the option of one paying twenty-five thousand today, the present value of anything that you pay today is the present value is that single is that amount. So twenty-five thousand. But option two is a little more tricky because you're going to be paying 10000 at the end of each year for three years. So we would use the present value type. The subtype would be uh, an annuity. So we'd use the present value of an annuity table, table four. Look it up for 10%, right? For three years, you get 2.48685 from table four. Multiply it, you get 24868.5. So what option is better? From a business perspective, we take the cheapest option. So the cheapest option would be option two, paying the 10000 at the end of each year. And this is the importance of using time value of money concepts. Well, this, is, this ends this short video on time value of money. I will come back where we will deal with the present value and the issuance of bonds. Thank you for listening. <laughs>